from Dr. Calvin. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. This afternoon, we will debate a motion calling on the government to restore funding to physician services, including the $815 million slashed from physician services. The minister, the premier, received a letter from a new family physician practicing in Dufferin Caledon. In her letter, Dr. Meg laid out how cuts will impact the patients in her community. They are considering letting go of some staff, shutting down their blood lab, one of only two located in Orangeville. To quote Dr. Meg, I would like to be clear with this point. Patient care will suffer. Will the government restore the $850 million you have slashed from physician services? Thank you. Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, what we've done is, uh, following the independent conciliator's advice, We've implemented the proposal that was presented to him and endorsed, which call, calls not for a cut but for a 1.25 per cent increase in the physician services budget last year, this year, and next year. And in fact, I think I would hope that the uh, member opposite would agree that all we're doing, Mr. Speaker, is sticking to the increase that was presented to Judge Winkler that he agreed with. Because the danger is, Mr. Speaker, if we go over that budget, that 1.25 per cent increase in budget, then we won't have sufficient funds to be able to apply it to increases in home care, to pay the increase in wage to our PSWs, to uh, address the important issue of nursing recruitment and retention, Mr. Speaker, those mental health investments that are so important. But, Mr. Speaker, Answer. we spent a year and a day negotiating with their doctors. We presented 75 proposals to them. We did not get a single answer or advice back from them on which one of those Thank proposals you. would provide a savings. Supplementary. Back to the minister, your numbers don't add up. The population is increasing. People need to see their family physician. Frontline physicians like Dr. Mag are saying you need to work with doctors. We're no longer part of the team providing health care. You've cut us out. As Dr. Mag said in her letter, I would like to be clear with this point. Patient care will suffer. I want the Premier and the Minister to know that you are outright lying every time you tell Ontarians their care. The member will withdraw. I withdraw. I Excuse me, stop the clock. I, I thank the member for withdrawing, but the, that is not uh, acceptable. So those people in the background that are indicating that I made a wrong judgment, I did not. Carry on. I ask again, will the government support this afternoon's motion that states the people of Ontario deserve the highest quality of care in the world-class health care system? Thank you. Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, the people of Ontario deserve the best, highest quality physicians in the world, and we have them, Mr. Speaker, and I'm proud to be a member of that, of that profession. I met with the president of the OMA, Michael Toff, yesterday and uh, his team. Uh, they're the ones, Mr. Speaker, that have refused to come back to the negotiating table. From day one, I've said that I'm prepared to sit down and discuss on a go-forward basis after accepting the recommendations of our impartial third-party umpire. They didn't like the decision that that umpire made. Mr. Speaker, we're bound to it. We believe that it was a fair offer. Judge Winkler agreed with us. We put, to put in front of the OMA 75 proposals for how we could find savings so we could slow the growth of that budget to one 1.25 per cent a year. The OMA did not Order. respond to a single one of those proposals. They aren't prepared to negotiate. I had a good meeting, however, yesterday, and I remain hopeful.